गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आम टी दो वेरी केयरफुली बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू समथिंग अबाउट योर कमिंग एग्जामिनेशन योर फर्स्ट पेपर दैट इज इंग्लिश विच इज ऑन थर्स डे ट्वेंटी सेकेंड फेब्रुवरी जस्ट अ कपल ऑफ डेज अवे फ्रॉम नाउ मीन्स फ्रॉम टूडे एंड आई वुड सजेस्ट यू टू बिगिन योर फर्स्ट पेपर विथ एज गुड प्रिपरेशन एज यू कैन डू and trust me the best way to work on english now is to solve previous year's papers if you complete even 8 to 10 sets properly i assure you that you can easily take your score to above 90% keeping this in mind i am presenting you the analysis of previous year's papers in today's class i am going to discuss the second set asked in 2023 i have already uploaded set 1 in case you have not done i would advise you to complete that first i have provided the video link of that paper in the description box you can check one two things more uh i would advise you to watch video lectures of stories and poems that i have uploaded on my channel because a good revision is an absolute must for having you know stronger grip on your subject and finally do your revision by writing because ultimately you are going to present your answer in a written manner and when you write try to include some good phrases of english some good structure try to avoid grammatical errors because only then your answer sheet will stand out of rest of the candidates so now with uh, these suggestions let us begin the discussion of second set that is set number 2 which was asked in 2023 so let's begin today's class this is set number 2 and here in these boxes you have to write your roll number on the day of your examination on the day of your examination please read everything that is given over here these pieces of information are very very important for you so read each piece of information very carefully so that you may not have any confusion on 22nd of february when you are sitting for your board examination these are general instructions given about how this question paper has been structured and what you need to do when you are answering the questions when you will be sitting for your examination on thursday 22nd february then some of these instructions will remain changed because according to the sample question paper that has been issued by cbsc for the year 2023-24 there are slight changes so on the day of examination please read each instruction carefully and then general instructions to be kept in mind now let us begin discussion of first passage but before i begin the discussion i would like to suggest you one thing that you should pause the video and read the passage then you do the questions before i explain in this way what will happen you will be able to know where you are going wrong and where you are right so it will be easy for you to understand your own preparation so pause the video read the passage answer the questions then watch the explanation let's begin reading and understanding the first passage well i have read the passage and i am going to tell you something about what it is but even then i will read each and everything for you so that you can develop your understanding of the passage 
this passage the first that is in front of you is about cricket what kind of cricket what kind of game cricket is what are the factors on which it depends and uh, in the second paragraph that you can see here in the second paragraph the author is talking about the viewers when they watch cricket match whether sitting in the st uh, stadium or at their home how they behave how they react and in the last paragraph that means in the third paragraph the author is talking about commentators journalists politicians analysts how they can do a great favor to the competing teams of cricket so this passage is about game of cricket now let me read the passage one by one or paragraph one by one and then show you how the questions have been set so let's read the first paragraph the first paragraph reads when we think of the game of cricket we come to the conclusion that it is primarily a game that depends on outstanding physical activities good hand eye coordination speed skill and strength it provides entertainment and generates strong feelings of excitement a good match of cricket or any of or any other game neither adds to the existing stock of human knowledge nor reveals any secret of existence it does not carry any deep meaning but most people particularly the lover of the sports attach deep emotions and numerous meanings to it games are thought of as a metaphor for life they are supposed to teach many lessons in fact more is said and written about a cricket match than about scientific feeling findings or great philosophy now let me read the second paragraph also then i will explain the entire passage but i think you must have understood from my reading also this is because games like a morality play in which settings and rules are made by us can easily make people test their fair and foul, foul conduct principles of reward and punishment and emotions of joy and disappointment they can make us experience the thrill of war without exposing us to its dangers a man watching a cricket match on tv and munching popcorn is like a surrogate warrior in fact games provide us with a safe outlet for our aggressiveness if games become aggressive they lose the very purpose of providing entertainment and purging us of our aggressiveness they can calm our impatience without creating any conflict and in the third paragraph the author says commentators journalists and politicians and analysts can do a great favor to the competing teams by keeping the excitement within limits the teams should play without being dominated by feelings of national honor and shame excellent performance of the players of both teams should be enjoyed and appreciated winning or losing in a game should not be taken seriously a game is a fun if it is played with true spirit of sportsmanship so basically if we have to explain it in simpler words then in the first paragraph the author is talking about the game of cricket and says that it depends on many activities mainly physical activities good hand and eye coordination speed skill and strength then what it provides the basic purpose or main purpose of game of cricket is to provide entertainment and generate strong feelings of excitement then the author goes on to say that so far as a match of cricket is concerned it doesn't have any existing stock of human knowledge but it is people who associate a number of meanings and attach deep emotions and numerous meanings to it so 
the first paragraph is basically about the factors on which the game of cricket depends and how people associate emotions and numerous meanings to the game of cricket or any other. In the second paragraph, the author says that, so far as this game is concerned, why does people, why, why, why do people do like this? Because it is like a morality play. In morality play, what happens? In which settings and rules are made by us and can easily make people test their foul, fair and foul conduct. And there are principles of reward and punishment. So here, the author is talking about reward and punishment. See, emotions of joy and disappointment. So, there is a connection between the first paragraph and the second paragraph. He says that people associate meanings and emotions because the game of cricket is like a morality play in which settings and rules are made by us and easily make people test their fair and foul conduct. In simple words, if I say, if uh, there are no rules and regulations, then people can use unfair means to win a game of cricket. And uh, then there is comparison of cricket watchers, like those who watch cricket match, experience the thrill of war without exposing us to dangers. And he has compared a man watching a cricket match on TV and munching popcorn like a surrogate warrior. Who is a surrogate warrior? A surrogate warrior is a person who is not fighting but sending someone else to do. So here in case of uh, watching a cricket match on TV, you are not playing but you are fighting for the players. Therefore, you are a surrogate warrior. And in the last paragraph, he is talking about how commentators, journalists, politicians and analysts can do a great favor to the competing teams by keeping the excitement within the limits. So this is how they can do. Now let us move on to how questions have been set. Question number one. Complete the sentence by choosing an appropriate option. Most people conclude that cricket is primarily a game because so it is talking about what are the factors on which a game of cricket depends. So it is played as a match. It requires two teams. It includes physical activity or it depends on a skill and a strength. So two factors have been mentioned in the first paragraph. It depends on physical activities but here it says it includes physical activity. And option D says it depends only on skill and strength. So option D will be the right answer. Now let us move on to question number two. Here if you see this point is given. It depends on, it depends on skill and strength. So this point is given over here. Now moving to second question. Second question is, comment on the writer's reference to the cricket, reference to that cricket doesn't reveal any secret of existence. So, the, the author says here in the first paragraph that the games of cricket, it does not carry any deeper meaning. Right, and says that it does not, the game of cricket, a good match of cricket or of any other game neither adds to the existing stock of human knowledge nor reveals any secret existence. So your next line, this will be your answer. It does not carry any deep meaning but most people particularly the lover of sports attach deep emotions and numerous meanings to it so these will be your answer number two 
answer number two. Now let us move to the third question. In the third question, comment on the writer's reference to that cricket does not reveal any secret of existence. We have done it. List two reasons which watching a game of cricket gives rise to. So, watching a game of cricket generates feelings of excitement. So, here it provides entertainment, one, and generates strong feelings of excitement. So, this is your answer number three. Let's move to question number four. Question number four is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Question number four is, select the option that conveys the opposite of destroy from what's used in the passage. So destroy means end something and reveals, experience, generate, purging, generate is the opposite because destroy means to end something, to finish something and generate means to produce something, to create something and this word has been given in the first paragraph, generates feelings of excitement. Question number five. The writer would not agree with the given statements based on paragraph 2, accept. So, in simpler words, the author wants to ask that which of the following four statements, one statement is correct in the context of second paragraph. So, rules of any game are made by people. Watching a cricket match makes the viewer believe that he is fighting a battle. It is necessary for a game to be aggressive in order to build excitement. A game can test people's sense of fair judgment. So here, option B is given in paragraph number 2. When he says that watching a cricket, ma cricket match makes the viewer believe that he is fighting a battle, a surrogate warrior. So answer to that question will be B. Moving to question number 6. With reference to the passage, spectator is compared to a surrogate warrior. In the second paragraph, he has written that someone who is watching a cricket match on TV is like a surrogate warrior. So what does it mean? Choose the option that best describes this phrase. Spectator who is paid to watch? No. A spectator who is in pain while watching the match? No. Spectator who enjoys the match as an armchair soldier? and D, spectator who makes judgment about reward and punishment. So answer to this question will be C. Spectator who enjoys the match as an armchair soldier. What does it mean? An armchair soldier? An armchair uh, soldier is one who sits in chair but feels like fighting a war. Likewise, is the viewer of the cricket. Why does the writer compare games to a morality play? Because it's setting here he says because its settings and rules are made by us and can easily make people test their fair and foul conduct. So answer to this question will be from here to here. This will be, this is question number which one? 7. So that will be 7. This will be answer to question number 7. Now let us move on to question number 8. Complete the given sentence with an appropriate inference with respect to the following. The writer says that games can calm our impatience without creating any conflict by by uh, creating any without creating any conflict because creating any conflict by so this statement is given towards the end of the second paragraph somewhere we saw if games become aggressive they lose the very purpose of providing entertainment and purging us of our aggressiveness they can calm our impatience without creating any conflict so answer to that question will be from here because 
game should not become aggressive and if they become aggressive they lose the purpose they lose the very purpose of providing entertainment and purging us purging us that means cleaning us making us free of our aggressive nature moving to question number nine the writer advises the players that games should not become aggressive because why because if games become aggressive same point if games become if games become aggressive they lose the very purpose of providing entertainment so this is number nine answer to question number nine our last question let's see select the most suitable title for the above passage excellent performance by cricketers no the passage is not talking about performance of cricketers the benefits of playing cricket no it is not talking about the benefits of playing cricket cricket the king of games no there is no comparison with other games the true spirit of playing games will be the the true spirit of playing games so what should be the true spirit of playing games so this is the first passage after this let us begin the second passage now let us begin the discussion of the second passage and this is the starting report that is given at the start of the passage then it is followed by four paragraphs and each paragraph has a headline look at it it begins with a question and then this paragraph will give you will give you the answer how bird hits happen why they are a concern that means this paragraph is going to talk about how bird hits happen and why bird hits are a matter of concern a matter of worry for aviation sector or you can say aircraft the second paragraph uh, are talking about why are bird strikes a concern is what are the reasons so far as the birds are concerned they are not very huge or you can say uh, danger causing flying creatures but yet why are bird strikes a concern you will get to know answer of this question after reading this paragraph and the third paragraph will give you the answer how critical are bird strikes to air safety how important how hazardous or how worrying and then paragraph number four is talking about what are the causes of bird strikes against aircraft so from these four paragraphs you must have understood that this passage is going to be a kind of report on bird strikes against aircraft and here beginning is aircraft movement is down but bird heats up so let us understand this report first observe it very carefully because one or two questions are definitely going to be definitely going to be based on this report so it is starting with 2016 and taking up to 2021 and this line shows that the number of bird hits against aircraft is going up only in the year 2016 the cases of bird hits were 839 the next year that means in 2017 it went up to 1125 and in the year 2018 it went from 1125 to 1320 the next year that means in 2019 there is a slight dip in the cases of the bird hits and then in the year 2000, 2000 there was again a dip in the cases of bird hits against the um, aircraft but you remember this was the year of coronavirus so this year it is showing that the number of incidents of bird hits against the aircraft was low mainly because 
so far as the number of flights were concerned it was minimum because there was no movement everything was locked down so there was no flight but in 2021 this went up to 1453 so if you compare the number of cases of birth hits from 839 to 1453 then the cases are on rise and we do not have the report for the year 2022 and 2023 you can do your own research so observing this report we can understand that so far as the bar hits cases are concerned they are going up and higher and higher so this is the report talking about the first paragraph let let us read it and i would advise you to pause the video read it carefully and then you listen to the explanation so the first paragraph reads at least two bird strike incidents happened on sunday both aircrafts returned to their airports of origin and were grounded for maintenance an abc aircraft which took off from guwahati towards delhi suffered damage to its left engine following a bird hit at 1600 feet the pilots returned to guwahati the other strike happened on another flight from patna to delhi the pilots of the aircraft suspected a bird strike during the takeoff roll but continued to climb following the takeoff rotation they were informed by the cabin crew of sparks emanating from the left engine subsequently the pilots were also informed by air traffic control of smoke coming out of one of the engines the pilots declared an emergency and returned to patna so in short this paragraph is talking about two incidents of bird heat and what happened after a the bird hit was reported so one is from guwahati to delhi and this case happened at 16 feet when the incident was reported the pilots returned to guwahati and then the next is from patna to delhi and it was detected why it was on its rotation that means when it was coming back the pilot came to know that some smoke was means smoke was coming out of engine then he declared an emergency and returned to patna so this is the gist of the first paragraph now let us talk about why are bird strikes a concern actually the author says bird strikes are among the most common threats to aircraft safety and they typically occur during takeoff or landing time keep this in mind so so far as the cases of bird strikes is con are concerned they occur during takeoff or landing time dozens of bird strikes happen each day but some can be more dangerous than others typically when birds collide with an aircraft's airframe it is unlikely to cause significant problems for the pilots flying but there are instances when the aircraft engine ingests the birds ingest that means you can say takes in or absorbs this lead to a loss of thrust of the engine this is important and cause maneuver maneuverability problems so once the dead bird is ingested by the engine then it can create you no know, flight problem maneuverability problems for the crew and these cases where a jet engine injects a bird produces originally call for for pilots to land the plane at the closest airport so most of the bird strikes are not dangerous but some of them can be especially when the bird has been ingested by the engine because it causes significant problem especially because 
there is a loss of thrust for the engine and therefore it causes maneuverability problems then the pilot has to land the plane as soon as possible now moving on to the third paragraph how critical are bird strikes to air safety smaller planes would generally be more susceptible means so far as smaller planes are concerned they are more more vulnerable means uh, greater threats can happen to smaller planes in comparison to the larger ones moving on to the second part of this paragraph however given that bird strikes mostly happen during takeoff and landing time these incidents could distract the pilots during what are highly critical phases of flights that demand the complete attention so so far as the takeoff and landing time uh, phases are concerned they are very very critical very very important you know times of flying air flying aircraft and this time when the pilot is either taking off the flight or landing the aeroplane then his attention must be or her attention must be complete and during this time only most of the bird strikes cases happen so this is dangerous now what causes bird strikes this paragraph is giving you answer to this question the presence of birds around an aircraft increases the chances of a bird strike so the author says that if there happens to be presence of birds around an aircraft then the chances of a bird strike increase in the monsoon another talking about monsoon why as water puddles emerge on open grounds attracting insects to breed the presence of birds increase so this is another cause and in some cases bird hits also occur at higher altitudes that means higher distance when plane is cruising that means when the plane is flying at a very high speed these are more dangerous than the low altitude low altitude hits given that they can cause rapid depressurization of cabins other reasons for bird activity around the air field could be presence of landfills or waste disposal sites so this paragraph is talking about a number of causes that uh, uh, are responsible for bird strikes hope you must have understood because this discussion will give you idea what the passage is about and the second time also when you are going to do the questions then we will have to return now let us begin doing the questions look at the first question does the following statement agree with the information given in paragraph 1 so this information is to be read very carefully and it reads when an airplane is hit by a bird or is suspected to have been hit the passengers must be asked to get down at once so whenever you are going to be given such kind of information and if the paragraph number is mentioned then my best suggestion to you is to keep important points in your mind that means when you are reading the paragraph you underline the keywords so so far as this information is concerned if i ask you do you think this information is given in the first paragraph answer is no i do not want to take you to the first paragraph you can go back but this piece of information is not mentioned in the first paragraph because the first paragraph is talking about two in, uh, instances two incidents of bird hits one from guwahati to delhi and another from patna to delhi so this particular when an airplane is hit by a bird or is suspected to have been hit the passengers must be asked to get down at once this is not given therefore your answer is this not given now moving to the second question select the option that is plays the most likely reason for bird hits most likely reason so here you have to talk about causes when the aircraft is overloaded at the time of landing or takeoff when 
the crew become negligent and train the passengers become panicky. So we have Ray that most uh, bird hits cases occur at the time of landing or takeoff. So your answer will be B. Moving to question number three. Complete the sentence appropriately with one word. Smaller planes are generally more than the larger ones. So here susceptible word is to be filled because in the given paragraph we have seen that smaller planes are more susceptible this word to the larger ones. Now moving on to question number four. Complete the sentence by selecting the most appropriate option. When the window or the wind screen of the airplane is cracked due to a bird heat, then what happens? When the window or the wind screen of the airplane is cracked due to a bird heat, then what should the crew do? The crew must rush to the cockpit. The pilot must land at the earliest airport. The pilot must inform the maintenance engineer. The pilot must get instructions from the aviation wing what should do in emergency. So this is your wrong, wrong, wrong. This will be answer should be the pilot. The pilot must land at the earliest airport. This is what we have read here. Here, this sentence so shows this can lead to a loss of thrust for the engine and cause maneuverability problems for the crew. In these cases, when a jet engine injects a bird, procedures would generally call for pilots to land at the plane at the closest airport. So, this is the answer. Moving on to question number five. Based on the reading of the text, state a point to further the statement. Dozens of bird hits take place every day. Fine. But only a few are dangerous. All of them are fatal. Fatal means dangerous. No, all of them are not fatal. But after every bird hit, it is imperative to land the aircraft. No, the pilot should ignore them. So your answer will be A. Because in the given passage, it says that every day, How critical. So here we were reading that every day bird strikes are among the most common threats to aircraft safety and they typically occur during takeoff or landing. Dozens of bird strikes happen each day, but some can be more dangerous. So here is the answer. Some can be more dangerous than the others. Moving on to question number. 6. Complete the sentence based on the following statement. Complete attention of the crew is demanded during takeoff and landing time because we can say this because most of the bird hits case occur during this time only. So that should be the answer. Here it says that most of here it is these incidents could distract the pilots during what during what are highly critical phases of flights that demand the complete attention of the crew. So this is the information given over here. Moving on to question number seven. Complete the sentence appropriately with one or two words. In cases where the aircraft engine ingests bird, it leads to the loss of thrust and causes problems in maneuverability problems in maneuverability that means flying the plane ahead or handling the plane so here is the word maneuverality so causes problems in maneuverality now going back to next question which are the areas more prone to bird hits which are the area more prone to bird hits so when we are talking about the areas that are more prone to bird hits, then we can be talking about paragraph number 4 here. The presence of the birds around an aircraft increases the chances 
so around an aircraft then in monsoon water puddles emerge on an open grounds then at higher altitudes then disposal sites so out of the four you can write any one or two based on the reading of the text state a point to challenge the given statement so here you have to challenge the given statement means in other words you can say this statement is wrong and you have to give the right one the area around airfields should be clear of any waste disposal sites yeah you have to give reason why area around airfields should be clear of any waste disposal because of this reason because look here and begin reading from this part other reasons for bird bird activity around the airfield could be presence of landfills sites so answer will be this that can attract a large number of birds so it should be clear air it should be clear what is the questions asking the area around airfields should be clear of any waste disposal because areas around this uh, a because waste disposal sites attract birds here that can attract a large number of birds creating possibility a danger of bird hits and moving on to the last question look at the graph it shows that between 2016 and 2021 whereas air flights have come down the bird hits have gone up this implies that the incident of bird hits has decreased increased remained constant or been alarming it has increased because the report shows look at the report A report shows that the number of bird hits have gone up from 839 to 1453 so it has increased so this is all about the second passage hope you must have understood now let us move on to section b creating writing skills now let us begin discussion of section b creative writing skills and here for this question you can see there are two options option a and option b so whenever you have two options for any given question i would advise you to read both the options very very carefully and then you find out which of the two is easier for you to do because i always say that so far as examination is concerned it is not a time to show your knowledge it is time to score marks and that also without making mistakes so if you attempt the question that is easier for you to do there will be less chance for you to make mistakes and score will be higher so let us read out both the options option a reads in collaboration with the municipal health department your school is organizing a health camp with an emphasis to, on fit living and healthy eating for the benefit of students between the ages of 12 years to 17 years draft a notice in 50 words informing students of the event also state the day date time and venue you are amit amita secretary student council option b members of the resident welfare association have decided to visit the senior residents of the society as a gesture of affection and sensitivity draft a notice in 50 words inviting residents to volunteer for these visits mention relevant details you are ritika rahul secretary rwa so if i have to suggest you to write the answer i would ask you to go for a reason is for this option about 70 to 80% details are already provided here in the question and you have to manage very little but in option b you have a little complex topic so when you are writing an answer in exam settings so it is possible that you may not be able to you know 
invent or discover cook up relevant and attractive details therefore this will be your saving grace now once you have decided that you are going to write a particular option then you read it very carefully and try to sketch out a rough work which you should do practice at your home and then you rewrite your answer removing all the grammatical errors and improving uh, sentence structure including you know some good vocabulary because this is what will make your answer stand out i have written answer to this option i am showing you and you follow the answer that i have written now look at this answer part and try to memorize each and every minute detail here this is your name of organization remember here uh, the name of school is not mentioned here it is mentioning your school so whenever specific name is not given in the question then i would advise you to write abc school so here i have written abc school and then i have given the name of the location where this school is located just below that you have to write this word notice and left hand you have to write date september 11 2022 i have written and here topic write a notice in 50 words informing students of the event so what is the event here event is organizing a health camp so that particular topic will be your headline so here fitness health camp and then the necessary details that are required to be written over here i have written in the body of this notice then writer's name and if there is a designation that has to be mentioned it should be here revise this notice at least three four times so that you can get perfection now let me take you to the second question invitation writing now look at question number four again this question has two options a and b that you can see do the same thing read both the options very carefully and try to find out which one is the easier one to do let us read it and then find out your school has invited a group of foreign students to attend your annual day function draft an invitation in 50 words to the guests and parents of the students okay. also state the day also state the day date and time of the function you are dr ahluwalia principal rohtak rohtak public school in its or option we have you are dr mehra an eminent educationalist who has been invited to address the students of sunshine public school on the benefits of reading and release a book written by one of the students draft a formal letter in 50 words expressing your inability to attain the function mention day date time and venue so here also you have to write once you have to write an invitation and here you have to write uh, inability to accept the invitation given invitation so here in of the two options i find the second one is better because this is containing more information in comparison to option a so i have written option b i'm showing you how you should write look at the answer this is your question and it has to be written in a for in the format of a formal letter so a formal letter goes like this first of all you have to write the sender's address as i have written over here right again you find that no address has been mentioned so you will have to invent all the required details on your own so this uh, neil vagan apartment is created by me and then rishu nagar because if there is an apartment you must have must be located somewhere and then the name of city one line gap then date has been given then one line gap and the receiver's address then subject and then salutation then first of all whenever you are beginning either acceptance or uh, you know refusal or inability to accept a particular invitation so first of all express your gratitude for uh, receiving the invitation that should be the starting part and then mention 
the occasion for which you have been invited, date, time, venue, and finally, you write your, express your inability to accept the invitation due to some prior commitments, or you can give your family function, you can give, uh, uh, say, sudden illness or urgent piece of work, any, uh, any reason that you think should be proper. And then, you are Dr. Mehta, uh, Dr. Mehra, that you have to write. So, this is your invitation part. Now, let us move on to later. Now, so far, a question, uh, so far as question number 5 is concerned, it will again have two options. One of the options will be a letter to the editor of a newspaper, as you can see here. Draft a letter to the editor of a renowned daily in 120 to 150 words on the need to keep your sur our surroundings clean. So this is one. This is also an easier topic and here you have to write an application for the job. I would suggest you to write an application for the job. Because if you finalize what you have to write in the final examination, you will be practicing that question only. There is no need to practice the second one. So before you solve any question, I would advise you to make, take a decision that I will be writing either a letter to the editor or I will be writing a letter of application, job application. So I would advise you to go for job application because uh, you will be getting more information and it's, it has a set pattern. So keeping this in mind, I have written the answer I am showing you, just have a look at it. Again, so far as a job application is concerned, it begins with the sender's address followed by one line gap, then the date on which you are writing the application, followed by receiver's address and then subject. Here space is not required, subject application for the post of a food technologist and then salutation. The introductory part, the introductory paragraph of this application must begin with reference to the advertisement published in whatever newspaper. Here I have given Times of India. So if an advertisement is published, it must be published on a particular date, which is given over here. Right. And then you write that you are writing to express your interest uh, in the advertised position or you would like to be considered as considered one of the candidate for the advertised position. So you express your interest in the job. And then the second paragraph, that is the main paragraph, includes all your necessary qualifications, skills as per mentioned in the question paper or mentioned in the question. Finally, the closing sentence, I look forward to the possibility of discussing my application further. That means you expect a response and it has to be written as yours truly or yours sincerely, then the writer's name. Here this is enclosure. Enclosure shows that you are including your bad data and this is your, these three parts must be included. Educational qualifications. It should be qualifications, not qualifications. Work, ex work experience must be according to the given question and references must be mentioned. The question will ask you to write two references which must be mentioned. If you don't write, then one mark will be reduced. So this is your letter. Now, next question that is six, where you have to write either a report or an article. Let us go to that part. So this is question number six and again we will have two options. So let us read both the options uh, first of all and then decide which one to be done. So here your So let us read this question. A 
Every Sunday morning, you have observed senior residents of the colony teaching children from the neighboring slums. You are impressed by this spirit of giving back to the community. You are Shalu or Shalin, news reporter for a national daily, write a report in 120 to 150 words on a community initiative. You may use following cues. So these cues are given using which you have to write this report. And then in its option, you have draft an article in 120 to 150 words to be published in a prominent journal on the problem of stray dogs in your colony. Give suggestions to overcome this menace. You are Prerna or Prashant. Use the given cues along with your own ideas to support the article. So here, so far as the menace part is concerned, here it is given in the chart, problem of stray dogs. First of all, they show aggressive or uncontrollable behavior. Then they littered streets by overturning dustbins. There are risks of diseases and constant barking and hauling nuisance to the community. So these are the problems and these are suggestions to address the problems. So using these cues, I have written this article. I'm showing you and you write it two, three times so that you can get perfection. Now, this is a format. First of all, you have to write the headline and then byline. Byline means writer's name. This is same both for article and report writing. And then according to the given cues, this article has been written. Again, I would like to take your, draw your attention to this part. And this part is here, this Rishav Nagar is not mentioned in the question paper. Note this. So because it is written that in your colony, in your locality, so you'll have to specify your colony or locality. So you can use any name of your choice. Here I have given Rishav Nagar from my choice. Read this answer carefully. Write it down on your notebook and practice it. Right. It will give you idea how you should write your answers in a perfect manner. So this is all about your writing section. And now let us begin discussion of section C, that is literature. Now, let us begin discussion of section C, literature. Read the given extract and then we will answer the questions. But after airport's security check, standing a few yards away, I looked again at her. Wan, pale, as a late winter's moon and failed that old familiar ache. My childhood's fear, but all I said was, See you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. This extract, as you know, is taken from My Mother at 66, written by Kamala Das. Look at the first question. Choose the correct option. In the above extract, the narrator feels which of the following emotions? Satisfied, fearful, nostalgic, or regretful? Give the answer before I discuss it. The correct answer to this question will be fearful. Here because the poet says familiar ache, my childhood's fear. So in the above, in this extract, the narrator, that means the poet, is feeling fearful. Now look at question number two. Identify the word in the extract. That means colorless. So, which word from this extract means colorless? The word is pale. Pale means colorless or having no color, you can say. Moving on to 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कंप्लीट द फॉलोइंग एनालॉजी करेक्टली शी सैंग लाइक अ बर्ड सो दिस सैंग लाइक अ बर्ड इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सिमिली इट इज गिवेन ओवर हियर इट हैज बीन कम इट हैज बीन कंपेयर by using the word like so all i did was smile and smile and smile so what poetic device has been used it's the repetition here the word smile has been used three times so it is repeated now let us move on to question number 4 read the following statement and choose the correct option the poet had gone through the security check two she did not want to look at her mother so according to the given extract here after airport's security check it means statement number one is correct the poet had gone through the security check and two she looked she did not want to look at her mother and here she says that i looked at my mother again it means statement one is correct and two is not correct so one is true but two is false your answer will be a now look at question number 5 what childhood what childhood fear is the poet referring to so here in the given extract the poet says that i looked again at her when pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache my childhood's fear so here this my childhood's fear is the fear of losing her mother so you can say that fear of losing her then moving on to question number 6 fill the blank with appropriate words with reference to the extract pale as a winter's moon suggests so pale as a winter's moon suggests so pale as a winter's moon so so far as pale is concerned it means weak and a winter moon a winter moon that means approaching towards the end of the life so here it will mean approaching towards the end of life then loss of it it fullness you can also say then you can also say loss of charm loss of charm so you can use any one of the given meanings now let us begin discussion of the next extract now let us begin the discussion of the or option look at the given extract and read it carefully it reads sometimes i feel myself i can hardly bear the thought of so much childish longing in vain the sadness that lurks near the open window there that waits all day in almost open prayer for the squeal of bricks the sound of a stopping car 
of all the thousand selfish cars that pass, just want to inquire what a farmer's prices are. So this extract has been taken from a roadside stand written by Robert Frost. I think you must be remembering. Now let us move on to question. Look at question number one and before I give you the answer, you try to give your own answer so that you can know whether you are going wrong or you are giving right answer. What is the sentiment expressed in the above extract? Remorse. Remorse means regret. So here regret is also given. Remorse, regret, empathy. Empathy means uh, feeling someone else's pain or suffering that is empathy. Disappointment means happiness and guilt. So there is no expression of remorse or regret because there is no part of the extract, nowhere in this extract the poet is showing, expressing regret. So remorse and regret will be eliminated. Now, empathy, empathy because uh, the poet says, sometimes I feel myself, so here the poet is feeling the pain of the farmer. Hence, he is empathetic. So, empathy is one feeling that is being expressed in this extract. The thought of so much childish longing in vain, the sadness, so he is expressing disappointment also. So, 3 and 4 will be the correct answer. 3 and 4, that means A. Question number 2. Identify the phrase in the extract that suggests innocent desire. So from the given extract, we have to find out a phrase that suggests innocent desire. Innocent desire. So which phrase in this extract shows innocent desire? So the phrase that suggests innocent desire is childish longing. So here childish longing suggests farmers innocent desire for earning money from the people of city by selling his produce. So this phrase childish, childish longing is innocent desires. Moving on to question number three. The roadside stand owners pray for a relief from the heat, free housing, cars stopping, benefits from pollution. Cars stopping. How? Let's see the extract. The sadness that lurks near the open window there, that waits all day in almost open prayer, for the squeal of bricks. So, farmer keeps praying that some car stops and when it stops, he can hear the squeal of bricks, the sound that is produced by a brick. When someone applies, it is suggesting that some car is stopping. So, stopping car, cars stopping. Complete the following analogy correctly. He fought like a lion, is simile. So, what is about selfish cars? So, selfish cars is an example of personification because the car have been personified. So, we can say personification. So here it has been personified. Another uh, literary device has also been used here that is transferred epithet.
transferred transferred epithet is a poetic device which means an adjective is used where it should not be in other words if i say this cars cannot be selfish so it refers to the people driving the cars because selfish can be people but it has been used to describe cars so when an adjective is used before a noun where it is not meant to rather it intends to modify some other noun it is called transferred epithet now look at question number 5 on the basis of the extract choose the correct option with reference to 1 and 2 given below the people who have put up the roadside stand keep waiting for customers they become sad when someone turns up so here the statement one is correct the people who have put up the roadside stand keep waiting for customers so this for the squeal of brakes for squeal of brakes means they are praying for customers so that is statement 1 is correct now talking about statement 2 so statement 2 says they become sad when someone turns up this statement will automatically be wrong because if you are waiting for some customer and if that customer comes and you become sad it cannot go logically also hence statement 2 is wrong so one is true and two is false option a moving on to question number 6 fill the blank appropriately with reference to the extract squeal of break squeal of breaks implies so what does this mean squeal of breaks so in the given extract squeal of break if you pay attention you can easily understand that it means this you give your answer before i give you the written answer so you have already studied stopping of cars or applying brakes so this is extract or now let us do question number 8 let us read the given extract first the clerk figured the fare he glanced at my fancy hat band but he figured the fare and i had enough for two coach tickets one way but when i counted out the money and looked up the clerk was staring at me he nodded at the bills that aunt money mister he said and if you're trying to scheme me you won't get very far and he glanced at the cash drawer beside him of course the money was old style bills half again as big as the money we use nowadays and different looking so this extract is taken from the third level and this conversation that you can see is being described by charlie when he is standing at the third level trying to book two tickets so this is the paragraph let us begin discussion of question why did charlie ask for two tickets your answer is here charlie ask for two tickets because he had enough money only for two coach tickets that also one way question number 2 complete the sentence by choosing the correct option when charlie offered money to the booking clerk the latter that means the clerk stared at charlie because the booking clerk thought it wasn't money did not trust charlie 
thought Charlie was trying to tease him, thought that Charlie had given him less money. So your answer will be this. The clerk thought that it wasn't money. It means option A. Moving on to next question. Select the option that best describes Charlie in this extract. He is a cheat. He is gullible. Gullible means a person who can be easily cheated. You can say innocent, simpleton. An opportunist, that means one who takes advantage of an opportunity or someone's helplessness. Or an escapist. So what do you think he is? Is he a cheat? Is he gullible? Is he an opportunist? Or is he an escapist? So answer to this question will be an escapist. Now look at question number four. If you are trying to scheme me, suggests, so when the clerk is making this statement saying, that if you are trying to scheme me, so here the clerk is saying, making this statement, looking at Charlie. So what do you mean by this statement? So it will mean in the given context that if you are trying, if you are trying to cheat, dupe also, cheat me, dupe me or make fool of me. You can use any one of the three. Now let us do question number 8b. That is the or option. And you can understand that this extract has been taken from the play on the face of it. Let us read and understand what it says. Well, that need not stop you. You need not mind. It would stop them. They would mind me. When they saw me here, they look at my face and run. They might, they might not. You would have to take the risk. So would they? No, you would. You might have me and lose all your other friends because nobody wants to stay near me if they can if they can help it. I have not moved. No, when I got down the street, the kids shout, Lay me lamb. But they still come into the garden, into my house. It's a game. They are not afraid of me. Why should they be? Because I am not afraid of them. That's why not. So this extract, as you can see, is a conversation between Mr. Lamb and Derry. And now, let us see what questions have been given based on it. The kids tease Mr. Lamb, but still come into his garden. Why? What does Mr. Lamb say? That they are not afraid of me. So because when I go down the street, the kids shout, lay me lamb. But they still come into the garden, into my house. It's game. They are not afraid of me. So the answer to that question will be, kids are not afraid of Mr. Lamb. Moving on to second question. Choose the best option that describes Mr. Lamb. So what kind of person Mr. Lamb is? Is he headstrong? Pessimist. Pessimist is a person who looks at the negative side of life. So of course he is not pessimist. Negligent. So nowhere it is mentioned in the extract that he is negligent. Positive, yes. The correct answer to this question will be positive because he is looking at the positive side of things. 
Now look at question number 3. Choose the correct option with reference to the extract. What makes Dairy tell Mr. Lamb that if he comes, others would stop coming? Mr. Lamb would not let others come. They would be reg reg uh, repulsed by Dairy. Mr. Lamb will have to choose between him and others and Dairy would flare up. Dairy would flare up. That means he would become angry. He would lose his temper. So, which would be the right answer? Can you give the answer before I give you the appropriate option? Try and try also to give explanation. The answer to this question will be B. They would be repulsed by dairy. So, why? First of all, the meaning of the word repulsed. That means they would be, uh, you know, they would be, what should I say? They would have the kind of feeling of dislike, right? If you see someone and feel hateful, fearful, so you are repulsed. That is repulsed. So, Dairy says that it is not he would. They would stop because they look at my face and run. Because he has a, uh, he has an acid burnt face. So the correct answer will be, they would be repulsed by him. Moving on to the fourth question. What does Mr. Lamb mean by they might, they might not? That means, so he says that when they look at my face, they run. And he says they might. They might not. You would have to take the risk. So would they? So what does it mean? What does it mean? They might, they might not. So it means that Mr. Lamb is not sure of uh, kids' reaction to dairy's presence in the garden. So you can say that people or kids may or may not run away. So you can say that they might or might might or might not run away or repulsed. So, this will be your correct answer. Now, let us discuss question number 9. Now, let us begin discussion of question number 9. Let us read the given extract and then answer the questions. Any dark heart means next lines of flames of flickering oil lamps sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers, welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles. Their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside. That is why they end up losing their eyesight before they become adults. So you can understand, this extract has been taken from the story, The Lost Spring. Now let us discuss the questions. Look at question number one. Complete the sentence with reference to the extract. Their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside because so here you can convert this line. The part that I am underlining. This will be, you can write like this, beginning from this part, I am writing here because I need some space, so you can say that because 
most of the time they work in dark apartments or they work in flickering oil lamps or you can say dim light so you can give one of the reasons now look at question number 2 which of the following would not be true the apartments were shining and inviting the children's lives were as bleak as their surrounding there were no electricity connections the boys and girls had not used had got used to the dark so these b c and d are correct this one would not be true because the hotments dark hotments cannot be shining if it is dark so here he says dark hotments so it cannot be shining and inviting hence option a cannot be true moving on to next question question number 3 the bangal makers lose their eyesight before they became adults because they already have poor eyesight the work in dim light they are married in childhood or they are malnourished so hope you can understand from the above discussion that it must be the work in dim light which of the following most clearly means adjusted in the context of the extract adjusted conditioned favored accepted reconciled so two words conditioned and reconciled are uh, a little close but uh, the proper word will be conditioned why conditioned because the flickering oil lamps the dark apartments working atmosphere all these create conditions for them so they are conditioned now question number 5 flickering oil lamps suggests what so so far as flickering oil lamps are concerned they are suggesting a number of things you can say let me write over here flickering oil lamps suggest what you can say dim light you can also say fluctuating fluctuating and if you can also say poverty because if oil lamps are flickering it also reveals financial or economic condition of that family so it can also suggest poverty if it is unconsidered in broader term now what is the antonym from the extract of the word rarely so you can say somewhere it was often here often so it will be often opposite of rarely will be often now let us discuss the or option now let us do the or option of question number 9 i am thinking of this stranger here said edla he walks and walks the whole year long and there is probably not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome and can feel at home whenever he turns he is chased away always he is afraid of being arrested and cross examined i should like to have him enjoy a day of peace with us here just one in the whole year so this extract this passage has been taken from the story the rat trap now let us discuss the question complete the following sentence with the most appropriate option 
Edla wished the peddler to have a peaceful day because the peddler had worked for Edla. The peddler had not been released from jail. The peddler had been staying at the forge. Or the peddler had always been looked with suspicion. So your answer is D because it is mentioned here that whenever he is wherever he is wherever he turns he chased away always he is afraid of being arrested and cross-examined now look at question number two select this suitable word from the extract to complete analogy single multiple so this is antonym of single so what will be the antonym of abroad let us see what is antonym of abroad so i'm thinking of this stranger here said edla he walks and walks the whole year long and there is probably not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome and can feel home so abroad will go with home it will go with home next question number three in the above extract edla comes across as conscientious pretensions compassionate selfless self selfless selfless so first of all you should know the meaning of the word conscientious pretensions it should be pretentious not pretensions because pretentious this conscientious is an adjective so it should be pretentious compassionate is also an adjective and selfish selfless selfless is also an adjective so the word should have been pretentious so because now you yourself consider that this girl says that i should like to have him enjoy a day of peace with us here just one in the whole year so she understands she understands in what condition the peddler spends his life wherever he walks he is not welcome he's afraid of being arrested and cross-examined and she wants to give this man a day of peace so she is kind she's full of compassion she is full of sympathy so she is compassionate and conscientious means having the knowledge of right and wrong if you know what is right what is wrong you are conscientious and if you pretend to do something you do not want actually to do but intentionally but you pretend to do so you are pretentious so she is compassionate here Moving on to question number four. Based on the above extract, choose the statement which is true. Relationships are rat traps. Relationships are rat traps. Money is important in the world. Criminal is not born but made. A Christmas is a time of charity. Christmas is a time of charity. So this will not be made, not be correct here money is important in the world no the extract is not showing that money is important criminal is not born but made mm. so criminal is not born but made christmas is a time so the answer correct answer will be christmas is a time of charity why because she wants to give him a day she wants to give him a day of peace and she wants to make him you know enjoy a day of peace so it is because of that one day that one day is Christmas 
in the context of the given extract which day which day is referred to in the expression just one day just one in the whole year that is christmas christmas what does the expression he is cross examined suggest he is suspected you can say he is uh, uh, he is cross examined he is uh, you know doubted so questioned so these words you can write so questioned interrogated interrogated cross examined so these are the words that should be the answer now let us move on to the next question now let us begin discussion of question number 10 short answer type questions here you have to answer 85 of the six given questions in 40 to 50 words each let us discuss question a but before i begin giving you the answer i would like to give you one suggestion over here you must answer your questions you must write your answers in the past tense because most of these stories refer to the past time hence the answer should normally be in the past tense unless it needs some general description so let us read question a when do the residents of alsace realize how precious their language is to them so answer to this question will be when the residents of alsace heard or came to know that orders had come from berlin to teach only german and also when aim hamel announced that it was his last french lesson the residents of alsace realized how precious the language was to them you can read page number four paragraph number two of the last lesson now move on to question b what are the feelings of the poet about her aged mother with reference to the poem my mother at 66 so with reference to the poem my mother at 66 the poet feels that her mother is growing old and is afraid of losing her she has the fear of loss she's worried but can't do anything hence she's helpless she is concerned and sad uh, you can refer to my mother at 66 poem for this answer all these feelings we have already discussed also now look at question number c question number c describe the role of rajkumar shukla in indigo so what was rajkumar shukla's role in indigo so the points that i am discussing can be included in your answer you can write that so far as rajkumar shukla was concerned he was instrumental in bringing gandhi to champaran it was he who initiated this movement he brought the issue of exploitation of sharecroppers to the notice and also highlighted the injustice of the landlord system going on in Bihar. 
in other words you can say that he is indirectly responsible for mobilizing Mahatma Gandhi for initiating the civil disobedience movement. So you can include the points that I have discussed. Now let us discuss question E. Explain the metaphor of the rat trap. In other words, how the rat trap has been compared to the world. So in the story, the rat trap, the world is compared to a rat trap. The author writes that mat material things act as baits and human beings feel tempted and get trapped in these rat traps. You can refer to the story. Now let us discuss question F. Do we experience things of beauty only for short moments or do they make a lasting impression? Explain with reference to the poem, A Thing of Beauty. Let us discuss the answer. Things of beauty make a lasting impression on us. With reference to the poem, A Thing of Beauty, the poet says that a thing of beauty is joy forever. Its loveliness increases and it never passes into nothingness. Or you, in other words, you can say, will never fade into oblivion. It means, it makes lasting impression. It has calming effect. And also, it is an endless fountain of immortal drink. So all these key points suggest that a thing of beauty does not provide joy for short moments, but they make a lasting impression on humanity. Now let us begin discussion of questions given under 11. Now let us begin discussion of question A. Describe Gondwana. So you must be knowing that this question is taken from the chapter Journey to the End of the Earth in which Tishani Dosi writes that Gondwana was a giant amalgamated southern supercontinent. It centered roughly around present-day Antarctica. When climate became warm, it began disintegrating. It was a home to a variety of flora and fauna and thrived for more than 500 years. So you can include these points. Now let us discuss question B. Do you agree with the Tiger King's statement? You may kill even a cow in self-defense. So, so far as this answer is concerned, you can write both in the affirmative or in the negative. Means if you are writing in yes, then the point will be different. And if you are writing it in no, then the keywords will be different. Now let us consider both the points. If you are writing yes, then you should include the point like any act in self-defense is justified. Any act in self-defense is justified. As per the prophecy, tigers were a threat to the tiger king's life. So he was right in killing even a cow in self-defense. On the other hand, if you write, if you want to write the answer supporting no, then it should go like uh, killing animals is an act of cruelty. And the tiger kings 
hunted tigers and killed hundred of them in self-defense. It was a prophecy that should not be taken seriously or it should not be considered that seriously. And king could have embraced his wise advice, his own consciousness. So, he should have thought of his own security. So, he was not justified in killing a hundred tiger. Now, let us move on to question number C. What extraordinary experience did Charlie have when he went to the Grand Station? The third level. It is talking about the third level. So, it is talking about the scene when Charlie reaches the third level. What scenes did he observe there? So, you can begin like this. The extraordinary experience Charlie had when he went to the third level was that he saw the people were from late 19th century. And the scenes on the scene, on the station were different. You can use any other point from that part. Now, after we have discussed the short answer type questions, let us briefly discuss question number 12 and 13 as well. Now, let us begin discussion of the long answer type question, that is question number 12. Here you have to answer any one of the two given choices. And as I have always suggested that whenever you have two options out of which one answers to one question is to be attempted, do the one that you feel you can do properly. Because what is important for you is to write it properly, make fewer mistakes and score maximum marks. So it is not the time to spend much time make mistakes and show knowledge. So, here the first question asking us, lost spring and indigo bring out how the common man is a victim of exploitation. Explain. So, I will be giving you important points, but uh, I have already posted video lectures of both the chapters. Lost spring and indigo in great detail. The chapters are available on my channel. I would advise you to revise both the chapters a number of times and then collect points, relevant points in line with the discussion that I am giving you. Now, as I have always been suggesting that whenever you are giving two options, then you must read both the options carefully and answer the one that is easier for you to do. So, in case of this question, in case of question number 12, of the two options, you should go for option A. Because if you answer a question based on poem, especially when it is asking you to have a good understanding of both good poems and Jennifer's Tigers and A Thing of Beauty, then you may not find very appropriate or suitable phrases to include. And so far as the meaning of sentences may not come to your mind at the spur of the moment. So in that case, go for option A. Now once you have decided that you are going to answer option A, where you have to show the comparison between two stories, Lost Spring and Indigo, where the question setter has shown similarity of themes. 
So here the question is asking you to show how the common man is a victim of exploitation. Explain. So in this case, how you should begin? You can say that both lessons, Lost Spring and Indigo, depict how the common man is oppressed due to the lack of awareness, education, empowerment, and money. So once you have shown the analysis of the two chapters, then you can take the first chapter. For example, you can take Lost Spring. In the story Lost Spring, the author has described the plight of skilled and unskilled workers. She has shown how basic needs of people like Saheb are neglected and how Mukesh represents a member of a family who is trapped in traditional old poverty and has to live in miserable living conditions and has to work in inhuman working conditions. The community members of Bengal makers are caught in a vicious cycle and are oppressed by people in power like sahukars, middlemen, politicians or you can include any relevant point. Now you can switch over to the next paragraph and can discuss the theme of indigo in which sharecroppers were oppressed by British landlords. They were forced to pay compensation to be free from the long-term contact and huge fees were charged by the lawyers for fighting the case in the court. And then finally, the, in the concluding paragraph, you can show the comparison. This shows that both the stories, Lost Spring and Indigo, bring out how the common man is a victim of exploitation. Likewise, you can discuss the points of Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, Tigers and a theme of beauty if you like to. Now let us discuss question number 13. Like question number 12, question number 13 also has two options. The first is taken from enemy and the second is childhood memories. But the themes of both the chapters are different. Here, the question is asking you about Dr. Sadao and here it is about Bama and Zit Kalasa. So of the two options, I would advise you to go for A because you will find it easier to write even if you do not remember the exact keywords. Even then you can make out the important scenes and will be writing a better answer in comparison to writing answer for option B. So let us read out option A carefully. After seeing of the enemy soldier, Dr. Sadao must have felt relieved. He was able to uphold the oath that he had taken as a doctor. Dr. Sadao made an entry into his the daily diary explaining the dilemma faced by him and how he resolved it. Imagine yourself to be Dr. Sadao and express his thoughts. You may begin like this. I was able to uphold the oath that I had taken as a doctor. So your starting line is also given. So you have to begin with the same line and then you can begin that one day I chanced upon to see a foreign soldier, American soldier being washed ashore and it was a difficult experience for me to decide whether I should leave him back in the sea to die or bring him back to my clinic to treat him and uphold the oath that I had taken as a doctor. I was in a dilemma whether to treat or hand him over to the police. Yeah. 
as a doctor, I was compelled to treat the man without considering his nationality or color of his skin. Therefore, I decided to report. Now, let me discuss some of the key points that you should include in uh, your answer and along with the points that I am giving you, you should collect some more points and make your answer a better one. So let us see what the question is asking you to do. After seeing of the enemy soldier, Dr. Sadawa must have felt relieved. He was able to uphold the oath that he had taken as a doctor. Dr. Sadawa made an entry into his daily diary explaining the dilemma faced by him and how he resolved it. Imagine yourself to be Dr. Sadawa and express his thoughts. You may begin like this. I was able to uphold the oath that I had taken as a doctor. So the starting line is also given and you have to begin with the same line. So you can say I was able to uphold the oath that I had taken as a doctor when I found an enemy soldier washed ashore at my doorstep. It was a difficult experience for me to decide whether I should leave him back in the sea to die or to honor the oath that I had taken as a doctor to save, to save any human being irrespective of his nationality and the color of his skin or you can say background. I was in a dilemma whether to treat him or to leave him to die. I decided to hear my consciousness, my inner thoughts and carried him to my clinic and began his treatment. Against everyone's wishes, against the wishes of my servants, I decided to operate on him and brought him back to life, gave him a new lease of life. But I did not forget that I was a doctor too. I was a staunch nationalist, a patriot. Therefore, I decided to report to the general as a true patriot. I was relieved when the general took over the responsibility to help me get rid of this soldier. I waited anxiously for three days that the general would send his assassin to help him, to help me get rid of him. But when I did not find any solution in sight, then I resolved the situation by planning an escape route for the soldier. And I found relieved of the burden when I saw that he had safely escaped. So including these points, suggested points that I have used in my answer, you can pick out the important points from the chapter and create a beautiful answer for the given question. So it's all about the test. Hope it will help you a lot.